let's study sin, shall we? Not in a way that is sinful, but let's understand sin so that we can loathe it more and mortify it better. Courtesy of Tim Challies, the Canadian blogger, eight ways you're sinning when you're looking at dirty images. Let's study sin and let's hate it more together, shall we? This is the first sin you commit. You commit the sin of adultery. Oh, I, I'm just looking, man. And what did Jesus said? If you just look with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Pornography is lust, and it exists to foster lust. But lust is simply a form of the wider sin of adultery, the deed or desire to be sexually involved with someone other than your spouse. We think God is like us. He just looks on the outside and makes a judgment about a man. Oh, contraire. That's Greek. You can look it up. He looks at the inside. He studies the heart. Will he who made the eye not also see? Will he who made the ear not also hear? Will he who made the brain not know what is going on in your fantasy life? Oops, we stumbled into another area of porn, didn't we? Perhaps you're thinking, well, I don't even look at the images. But you write movies, you produce, direct, and most likely star in them. What are you doing? You two are committing the sin of adultery. Here's the second way we sin. You commit the sin of deceit. Because pornography generates shame, you have to hide it, cover it up, or refuse to confess it. When you erase your browsing history to keep your parents from finding out, when you use it in secret to keep your spouse from discovering your dirty addiction, when you refuse to proactively confess it to an accountability partner, when you participate in the Lord's Supper, even though you are unrepentantly given over to it, you are practicing deceit. That's another way your sin might be killing you, through communion. What is the warning that Paul offers in 1 Corinthians 11? If you participate in the bread and the wine unworthily, unexamined and unrepentant, that is why some of you are weak, sick, or even dying. Are you watching porn regularly and taking communion? You do so, seriously, at your own peril. Not kidding. The third way we sin when we look at pornography, you commit the sin of theft. Fully 60% of all illegal downloads are pornographic content. While we can be glad that the industry is in dire straits, we have no right to participate in such theft. When you use porn, you are almost definitely watching material that has been stolen, and in that way you're participating in its theft. Oh, great! Yet another way that we're sinning. Come to think of it, there are five more ways you're sinning when you look at pornography. Here's number four. You commit the sin of greed. Sexual sin is greed a form of taking advantage of another person to defraud them of something that is rightly theirs. It is to allow greed to motivate fraud, to unfairly and illegitimately use another person for your ignoble purposes. And don't you dare utter, well, they do it voluntarily and they get paid for it. That does not reverse this away. Number five, we sin. You commit the sin of sloth. Pornography is lazy, a misuse of time. It is using precious moments, hours and days, to harm others instead of help them, to foster sin instead of killing sin, to backslide instead of grow, to pursue an idol instead of the living God. Furthermore, it's slothful because you satisfy your lusts and desires lazily instead of working hard to be a man that a woman, your wife, would desire. You're watching porn? You're lazy. The sixth way we sin when we look at porn, you commit the sin of sexual assault. 
A person who drives a getaway car for a band of bank robbers will rightly be charged with murder for anyone who is killed in committing that crime. The person who voluntarily watches sexual assault for purposes of titillation is rightly guilty of that sexual assault. Gulp. The seventh and eighth ways we sin. When we look at porn, you commit the sin of ignoring the Holy Spirit who is pleading with you to stop. And finally, you commit the sin of idolatry. And the idol is you, you, and you, and not the God who died for you. Sin, it's never a surface issue. The presenting sin is never where it starts or stops. There are always levels. Be killing it on every level, or we can look forward to reading about you in the blog that says, there's a godly man, there's a godly woman who is apostatized and is now living in a swamp of sin. Do not let that be your story. Mortify sin like today, or it will be killing you. If you do not know how to help somebody who is struggling with emotional issues due to infertility, sexual abuse, miscarriage, self-harm, you will, if you get tried by biblical counseling, too.